Surely one of the most important stories here in Paris concerns this, the Volkswagen Lupo 3-litre TDI. Well, it doesn't look much like a throbbing 3-litre engine to me, and that's because it isn't. In this case, 3-litre means 100 kilometres with just 3 litres of fuel, making this the first 100 miles per gallon car. It's extremely impressive, and the person behind this, the product manager for the Lupo, is Dr Carl Taylor. How do you do, Alan? Hi. How on earth have you managed this? It's a holy grail for many manufacturers, and you've done it. Yes. Three litres in continental Europe was a magic barrier that nobody thought would be able, that we would be able to break with a conventional motor car. You've heard many uh, technologies that other manufacturers have attempted to use, uh, hybrid technologies, electric motors, but to, with a conventional available fuel to achieve a fuel consumption of uh, under, and we say under, we actually get below three liters per 100 kilometers. And this is a real car. Not this glass one, of course, but its sister car that we see over there is a real car, and it is a series car and will be available to the public early in the year. Now, there's quite a lot of innovation that's gone into the making of this car. Uh, talk us through the sorts of things you've done. Yes, we, uh, about 25 months ago, our chairman, Dr. Pierre, uh, raised this challenge, and the technical community in our, in our company picked it up. And we, we very quickly realized that no single factor would uh, we could achieve such a fuel consumption. We had to look at the whole car. As one of my colleagues put it, literally every single piece was put on a table and looked at, and how can we optimize it? What is the first place you optimize is weight. A weight of a car is quite considerable. You have to consider you have to protect your passengers, you have to carry them at high speeds, you have to brake. The car requires rigidity, it requires weight, and can easily even for a small car, exceed a thousand kilos. This weight, or a ton if you will, this weight had to be reduced. But that wouldn't be enough. Just having a lightweight construction still wouldn't get you there. You need the proper aerodynamics. And the aerodynamics uh, of this particular vehicle, we have a coefficient of 0.29, which is even an improvement over our new Lupo with a 0 0.32. 0.29, it's hard to get better than that. The, the next step is obviously in the engine. We need a highly fuel efficient engine, but also an engine that provides performance. Actually, fun to drive. And we did this with our new uh, diesel, turbo diesel direct injection technology. We, in this particular engine, we what we have called pump spray injection, but I don't want to bore you with the technical details. The important thing is this engine gives you torque, it gives you performance as well, not only performance at the petrol station, but also performance on the Autobahn or motorway, if you will. Well, earlier on today, a few journalists here were allowed to drive the new Lupo TDI, and I was one of them. This is how we got on. The streets of Paris are far too congested to test drive cars on, so we're on a short but spectacular helicopter ride with Paris in the autumn spread out below us on our way to the Mortfontaine test circuit. This is the 1.2 litre TDI Lupo and this time 1.2 litres does mean the engine size and it's very interesting because a switch over here allows you to change the power output from 30 kilowatts in economic mode to 45 kilowatts for a bit of extra power if you want to push up the hill. Now there are also two different ways that you can drive the car in terms of the gearing. I'm in the automatic gears at the moment and you might be able to tell as I pass through them it's quite lumpy up through the gear shifts but if I now switch it over to Tiptronic into, as Volkswagen people are telling me, Michael Schumacher mode, then the whole thing becomes a lot smoother. And I rather like this. This is the first time I've used a Tiptronic system. Let's just move up a gear. Very smooth. We're now in fifth. Back down to fourth. Braking now. Into third. And that's a lot smoother than using the automatic system. 
So how do you know whether you're getting your three litres width per 100 kilometres? Well, as you'd expect, there's a very clear indicator on the dash. Now, I'm travelling at about 45 miles an hour in fourth gear, and I'm doing rather better. I'm getting about two and a half litres per 100 kilometres. Now, that's good value. Well, I have to say, this is a lot more fun to drive than I was expecting for a 1.2 litre engine. It's very positive, it's got plenty of poke, and it handles the corners really well. But it's also got a great trick up its sleeve when I stop the car in economy mode, automatic transmission. Now, the car stop, brakes applied, let's all count to four. One, two, three, four. The engine cuts out for fuel savings, and all I have to do to get the car going is press the accelerator again, it'll start up, and off we go. That's very clever.